Well, uh, let's let's begin. So it's good seeing everyone here. Thanks for thanks for joining on uh, joining us. We got we got a good contention online today, and uh, and so we're we're continuing through Galatians. La- last week we we read the first I think fifteen or so verses of of chapter three, and I figured we'll we'll do that again. We'll read that again and kind of go through it again. And and what I I, I really enjoyed last week's discussion that we had, because I think we, we came up with some interesting ways of talking about um, what Paul's going through. And, 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 and one of them was this idea of things that look righteous, but actually aren't very good. You know, like that's, I think that's a good way of kind of putting it because that's still stuff we still have to deal with today. You know, where, where you have things that people will present you that they're snakes in the grass and, you know, they're all that stuff and it looks right and good and all of that stuff, but it's, it's actually not bringing any, any life behind it. It's just bringing uh, more captivity, more enslavement, more, you know, like, like all, all these things, it's putting us more into, into uh, bondage. Uh, you know, I could say, so it's these things that look righteous, but actually when you kind of look at them, it's like, well, that's not, that's not helping at all. And I thought that's a good way. And that, and what that tells us is that in following after Christ, I think it's kind of a rare time when you can just go, this is how it is every time, unless we're talking about the grace of Jesus, you know, showing the grace of Jesus. But I think you could take anything too far like we've seen people do this all the time like you can go on a diet but you can take a diet too far you know you we all have well at least everyone in my in my in my day and time there's a lot of people that have taken crossfit too far <laughs> you know like that's yeah you know, it's you got we got people that you, you can even take like church things too too far where it stops being anything that stops being about the grace and a life well lived and you become kind of zealous for like a lifestyle type, type of thing. And I think Paul's kind of getting, getting on that. And there's usually bad actors that are trying to get us into those zealous places, this, the into those places where it's like, you got to do this. You got to live this way. You got to, you got to be these things. Right. So, so I think we're kind of, we're kind of to there. And we saw that, Paul did this brilliant job of of using like the Jewish faith kind of against against them, but where he he's he's talking about circumcision and all that, and he's reminding them of the Jewish faith, and then he just he almost attacks them with Abraham, and he's like Abraham, like the father, you know, he's like the Godfather, you know, he is he is it, right? Like he, it, no one is more it than Abraham. He believed, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. You know, it wasn't because he based everything around circumcision or in anything like that. And and he kind of he kind of gets to this whole point. And um, let's see what what did he do here too? He um, and we talked in the second half of chapter two. We talked about Peter, and I kind of think he was using Peter as kind of a, a pivot point. But he's kind of speaking in like, you know, even Peter, you know, fell to some of those things. Like, as we were reading through this again last week, I've always been kind of told like, oh, yeah, yeah. Paul was just like hammering on Peter. He's just nasty to Peter and all that stuff. Like, like that's not kind of how I read it this last time. Like, he, I think he was using Peter, this beloved person in the thing, like, like how I, I may – I may use as like an example sometime of someone that we all know is a servant to the church. And it's like, even this person has struggled with this, you know, and it's not, it's not meant to be like, Oh, that person's nasty and disgusting. It's, it's just that person. Like if someone of that credentials of that amazingness of that faith can struggle with it, like we all could fall down that path, you know? And, uh, and so, and then he just goes right after that, he goes into that full this line and it's all these verses that we know by heart, right. That, that's it, you know, um, 
that he's that he says i have been crucified with christ is uh, i it is is no longer i who live but christ who lives in me life which i live in the flesh i live by faith in the son of god this is at the very end of chapter two who loved me and gave himself up for me i do not set aside grace of god for if any righteousness comes through law then christ died in vain and i and i just remembered that the abraham stuff is in chapter three. So we'll go, we'll read chapter three, one through 14 real fast and kind of go through, go through that stuff again here at, at the top. So, all right, let me hit this button, this button and this button, and then share that page and hit the button. All right, there we go. Uh, Guys, let me know if you can't hear it for any, any, any reason. We need bigger print. (laughs) Bigger print? <laughs> what in people. the world? It doesn't get any bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can make it bigger. I can make it bigger. Yeah. All right, let's see. We're going to chapter three. Chapter three, verse one. All right, here That's we go. Better. Oh, foolish oh, Galatians, Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? Oh, really okay. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Pause. All right. Okay, so so go, going through that, so you can see what what Paul is, is doing there. And, you know, he's, he's set up like it's by faith. Um, you know, it's, um, you know, I do not set aside the grace of God. This is the <laughs> last bit of, of two. I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness comes through law, then Christ died in vain. And he just kind of uses that as a launching point as it goes into our chapter, our, our chapter three. So in that reading there, did, did anyone notice anything that kind of stood out to stood out to them? Uh, the the second line it w- it was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. My notations say that his description of the crucifixion was so intense it was almost like being able to see it. Okay. And yeah. I, I I just thought that in <clears throat> itself must have been such an emotional drain to to have to describe it in that detail yeah yeah and so um so 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 your note is like referencing something probably probably paul had done like to describe like like the crucifixion of christ yeah like that's that and so, and because like you think about what he says right there, this, I mean, this is where, I think this is a good chapter break, but this, it's almost kind of unfortunate in the chapter break um, because he goes, 
then Christ died in vain. And he, and he's, and if you look at how he shows that, it's like in that dying in vain, like you have seen the Christ, Christ be, um, you know, clearly portrayed you know, among you as crucified. And now you just don't want anything to do with it is basically what he's saying. You know, you've, you've seen that. Um, and, and you, you know, you're saying that he's died in vain. If you think it's the law that is, that is saving you. Um, yeah. The, 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 was there anything else anyone, anyone notice? So, something that I, um, I underlined here was in verse one of chapter three, it's like, oh, oh foolish question, who has bewitched you? That kind of reminds me of the very beginning of the book in chapter one, when he's talking about like this present evil age, it's like a further defining of what, what he's meaning by that present evil age. That's a, uh, that's verse four of chapter one. And, you know, it's like, you have this evil age and he, I think is what he's talking about this evil age is not, I have a feeling he's using that evil age language and that bewitched language probably because that's the same language that's being used against the Galatians saying like, look at how evil the age is. You need to do the righteous things. You know, it's that thing where it looks good, right? It looks good. It's, and they're like, you know, don't be bewitched, you know, live, live this good, upright, upright life, life here now. Like you could, I mean, you even see this to this day where people, where you have people in the church, like those people need Jesus. And I kind of make, I make fun of that a lot of times because a lot of times I think we hear that it, it's, it, it's usually because they're living a life outside of a physical way than we think. It's oftentimes that that we we think that they need the grace of Jesus, and uh, and so so um, and so we we see we see this going through there. We just we just talked about that, and uh, he goes, "You're being so foolish, um, but you've been made perfect." And this is verse three: Have you been made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered in so many things in vain? If indeed it was it was in vain, like so. So he's like, did the flesh do anything to save you? Like we're just talking about how Christ and his grace has saved you. Has your ability to do anything good? Has it actually saved you? And so there, um, uh, let's see here. You know, he, he does all this. He, he goes at the verse uh, end of verse five, he does it by the works of the law or by the hearing of the faith. And then verse six is just like a boom. And it completely redefines that Hebrew faith. Like completely redefine. He doesn't re, he actually doesn't redefine. It. We'll, we'll get in there. But he goes, you guys, you guys remember Abraham? You know, he, he believed and it was counted to him as righteous. <laughs> You're trying to do all these righteous acts. And Abraham believed. And it was counted to him as, as righteousness. Like, like don't go away from the grace of God here. Like there, and, and then look at what he says in verse seven. I, I, this, I kind of saw anew in this latest reading. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Think about what he's saying there. So like, Think about what it would be like to be a Jewish a person of the Jewish faith during this time. The sign of your faith is circumcision, right? The sign of your faith is keeping the law. The sign of your faith is, you know, reading the Pentateuch and uh, all, all those things. And, and Paul is saying, it's like, no, it's not. The sign of your faith is the same sign that was of Abraham, right? Like it's, it's a redefining it. But if we remember the Old Testament prophets, they were defining it the same way. Remember, you have Ezra coming out of the mountains saying, like, God thinks all your, all your uh, sacrifices in the temple are worthless, you know, like that's, I think he uses a word worse, worse than worthless, doesn't he? Yeah, like that, that's, you know, like, like, like that's like, he, you know, he's, he's saying it's all like, this is nothing new. Like 
Jeremiah and Isaiah, they all, all the prophets use this language all the time. It's like they, they keep going. It's about the heart. And we see that with how God represents David, you know, where he's like, everyone looks on the outside, but the Lord looks at the heart. Like Paul, he's redefining it, but he's redefining it back into the old stream of uh, scriptural inspiration of the prophets of, of, you know, the story of King David, of, of Abraham. Even. Like he's, he's swimming in that river of the faith. And, and I, I thought that was cool. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, so it's a redefining, but it's reminding them of that, that entire stream. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah. In, my, in one of my footnotes, and it's basically about verse two and three, but it really applies to the whole thing. It says, we must realize that we grow spiritually because of God's work in us by the spirit, not by following special rules. Yeah. 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 So like this, so following, following after the spirit kind of following out in that, in that faith, you know, all those, all, all those things like, um, yeah, like, so, so what you just said there, Ed, um, really like hit me in the sermon for this week and I want to ruin it, but I'm not going to. So, so, so like, like that, that's, but it's, you know, that, that passing on the faith means different things then if it, if if we're passing on the grace of jesus that means our interaction with people is is different then you know it's not so much about a you got to do this but it's it's about kind of getting into that 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 river of the faith all throughout the the spirit right where you realize that the grace of jesus is there and um and so and so it, he just continues with all these things that they would have known about talking about you know abraham saying that all the nations will be blessed then this is verse nine so then those who are of the faith are blessed with believing abraham you know so he's he's basically like you guys are all in this stream of abraham like like swim in that stream like you're going outside of it if you're trying to make yourself righteous by doing these other things. Um, so let's see here. So then uh, let's see verse 10. Um, so he starts using this language, this curse language. And, and he, he's basically saying, it's like, we all know what's true is that cursed is everyone who does not continue in all the things that are written in the book of the law. You know, like, like we all know that. Like if you can't do it, then you're you're living you're living in the curse. Uh, you're cursed there, and 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 um, and 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 he, and he flips it. He flips it then, and it's like it's it, like you're not justified by the law. You're not you're not made holy by that stuff. He's coming back to Abraham then, and he's going. You, you're not going to find life in that law, but you're going to live by faith. Uh, let's see. So, and, uh, and, and then he goes in still with that cursed language, talking about how, how um, everyone is cursed who hangs on a tree. He's quoting something. He's quoting something there that, that everyone would remember. And, and, and he is using it to talk about Jesus, to talk about like that Jesus was the curse for us. And that we now have grace because Jesus took on the nastiness of our sin. And he took on all of that. And we can, and we can look to him and see holiness and righteousness. Um, yeah. Do it. So any, any, any thoughts, any, anything before we go on here? Another interesting footnote. And it goes really goes back to verse five and six and so forth. It says often the Holy Spirit's greatest work is teaching us to persist to keep on doing what is right, even when it no longer seems interesting or exciting. Mm, yeah. yeah. The Galatians quickly turn from Paul's good news to find teachings of the newest teachers in town. Yeah. And, and that's, and, and I, I talk about this a lot and I think it really plays in here, but that, that church that was in Seattle, that was so, so big and became influential throughout the entire country. This, the, the pastor's name was Mark Driscoll, and he's still bopping around. I think he's in Phoenix now. 
but it's um but you know it, it's he did all this stuff and and i think what made him so appealing was that he was so clear on how to live your life he's like you know wives you need to look like this you need to be doing this and and those things remained steady even in places of abuse and the, and it almost became abuse itself you know it was like you were serving righteousness for righteousness sake and that that was becoming what was what was saving you right. and uh, and so that's and again i i if you want to find out more about it that podcast the rise and fall of mars hill is so good it's probably 20 hours of content now that they've got out there about this but it's it's so good because all these people you know thousands of people were involved in this church you know they had like 20,000 a weekend type of thing they all wanted righteousness you know it's not that they wanted to serve the devil <laughs> you know like they didn't want to do evil they didn't want to do anything like that and yet they they allowed themselves into an abusive system which is because that's what it was is an abusive system for righteousness sake you know because they were trying to be trying to be righteous and that's and that's as as people in the church you know especially me but all of us in here and on on there we have to watch out for that that things don't become abusive systems that we're that we continue in that stream of the grace of of jesus we keep continue in that stream of of um father abraham and 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 righteousness by faith you know like that's that, that we that we push aside those those feelings and notions that if that we we got to do this in order to be in order to be saved and uh, and that's the hard thing that's the hard thing Sounds like a cult like yeah 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 it's it, i think i think that's actually a good and i think that's part of the difference between a cult and not a cult mm -hmm. is that when the Cults often have really stringent rules on, on how to do things and you get ostracized when you leave, you know, like that's like, you, you are not, you are not part of us anymore. And like all those. So they can't expel yeah. So like, that's like, and, and that's, and, and you can see that fruition. And again, I was making jokes about other things that we try to find righteousness in. You, you can have, What's that guy that likes to do the big conferences that's about like money management and like you can do to your best? What, what's Joel? Uh, Joel Osteen kind of like that's that's a pass. I, I was like, Joel it's not it's not Tony Dunn. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Tony, <laughs> not Tony Dunn. No, it's someone like that. But he's like a lot of his followers, I think, can get really cultish about about how they. Yeah, 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 and like, and I think you know, any of these things you got sucked in with anything. I think. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's and I think that's why Paul used Peter there, you know, there for a little bit. It's like even Peter fell into this, you know, like that's and and we can we we can we can do this too. Like, listen, it's why I talk about politics so much because that's a rabbit hole. It's so easy to fall into, you know where it's so easy to get mad and angry and, and, and I have a feeling you'll look back and you'll be like, well, that was a big hole in nothing. I got angry about, you know, I, and that's, and so that's, that's why I talk about it so much. Cause it, it's just, it, it's, it, it, a lot of times it's getting angry over something very little so that someone else can get power. And I, and I think that's kind of what Paul is talking about. He's like, these people want power in your midst and they're, and they're, Sowing seeds of discontent in the faith and discontent of Jesus on the cross, so that so that they can have influence. Also, I was thinking of planting a bad seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's and so so. All right, so let's let's continue on here. Uh, verse fifteen through the rest of the chapter. So the rest of the chapter here. So here we go. Chapter three, verse fifteen. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. 
Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. What purpose, then, does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. <laughs> is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confined all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Familiar phrases? Yeah, more, more, <laughs> more familiar phrases. <laughs> okay, uh, anything stand out um, to you there? I like this one where it says, Instead of tutor, it says disciplinarian. Disciplinarian. <laughs> what verse is that? 24. 24, huh? So, That's so the law was huh? disciplinarian. Disciplinarian. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Well, let's, let's look at that. Let's look at that. I got it up here. Um, here we go. Evidence yeah, yeah, okay. Let me let me get to let me get to it real quick. Well, I want it. It's not working. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Come on, computer. Why is it not working? Who broke it? It doesn't feel like it. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like it. Let's go to three. Come on. There. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, Bible Hub's not working. So it's. Uh, Hey, page is not working, so we won't we won't use that. We won't use that today. Internet's off, obviously working because we can all still talk online here, but um, for some reason that site's not working. So, so we have Tudor. What is? Let's see. What, what does the NIV say? The site that he goes to for the reading. Guardian. Yeah, I was going to look at the Greek, you know, because I'm I'm I'm, I'm bougie like that. Yeah, so Guardian. <laughs> In the, in the thing. So you have tutor, guardian, um, uh, uh, disciplinarian. And you think about tutor, uh, tutor is probably what it is. But you, you think about like tutor, the way we think about tutor now, it's like, oh, like after school, I'm having problems with my, with my homework. Um, and that's, that's, that's not really like, the thrust of that word in the past, you know, like that was, it, it was, it was much more of a, of a leader in bringing you up type of type, type of idea. So, so I think guardian is probably like a really good word there, but disciplinarian definitely brings a certain air uh, about, about that word, <laughs> about, about, about that with the, with the law, you can tell they're doing some translation there trying to get across so, um, something. Um, all right. What well, was there anything else that that we kind of wanted to make sure we didn't miss that you guys noticed? 
that again, that he points out the law came after the promise. Yeah. Yeah. So he hits that again, like that, that's, and, and I think that's, that's a really important, really important idea. Like he's saying, like, if you, if you want to get back to, back to, um, you know, the, the, the foundational stuff, you know, it's that Abraham was declared righteousness based on faith. It's not all the law stuff. You know, that's Genesis, not Deuteronomy, right? Like, you know, like that's, and, uh, and so, so he, uh, you know, that's, that's a, that's a really, that's a really important idea. Okay. So let's, let's start kind of going through this a little bit here. Um, there's something I, I kind of wrote to two things. Um, let's see, verse 16, uh, he goes now to, to Abraham and to his seed, there were promises made. He does not, uh, he does not say, and to the seeds as to many, but he says to, and your seed, who is Christ. Now, me personally, I, I use what I would call a strong body of Christ theology that I talk about it almost every week, like that we are the one body of Christ, you know, and I would say that Paul has a strong body of Christ thing. Think about everything we understand about the body of Christ was written by Paul, basically, almost everything. But where, where, you know, he talks about the different members and, you know, so, so like, would you pluck out your eye or, you know, like, like how, you know, how can you say to your feet, what are you doing? You know, if you're like all that, all those things, like, like that, all those things, like, it appears like that's what he's saying here too. He's like, he didn't call it seeds. He called it seed. And, and it's almost like this collective, you know, this collective that, that is, that is part of it. I, I thought that was, that was an interesting way that he's putting that where he's collecting us all into one. And I think he's collecting us all so that we will see the justification, the being made righteous by what Jesus did with his death and his resurrection. Um, let's see here. Uh, then I made another note here. Um, oh, uh, and he reiterates kind of what I was saying before about that whole stream of the prophets. You know, the prophets have always kind of focused on this righteousness and, and all that. In verse 17, he does this too. And this I say that the law, which was 430 years later, uh, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ. So he's kind of saying what Lee said but, um, here again. You cannot know that what will happen before God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer <clears> a promise, <throat> but, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So he, I think he, what he's saying there is that by doing well in the law, you're not in the promise of God. You're, you're like you're in your, your own, you're in your own promise to yourself. Type of thing. And it's that, that stream of righteousness again. Um, and then he's like, well, what does the purpose of God serve? Is the law against the promises of God? Like, no, no, it, it's, it's not. It served to, to be Ed's word there as a disciplinarian, as a tutor, as a, as a guardian of us to kind of, kind of help us, see and guide us along along the way and and you know and that's and that's just fine just like we stay on the road you know in our cars and all, all of the all of that mm-hmm. you know it helps us get to to our destinations but but by by no means do we do we let the roads be more to us than than they are that type of thing you know if i'm if i'm going over to ed's house yeah, I'll stay on the roads, but I'm going over to Ed's house, you know? And so, so it's, I think he's, he, he's a, you usually walk though when you come over to my, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty lazy. Ed. I'm pretty lazy. Ed. <laughs> but still like you, even when you're walking, you're still on those roads, you know, I could go through everyone's yard, but, but, but I don't. And, um, and I think that's, that's kind of the idea that he's talking about, about the law. 
And so that the law then is a tutor to bring us to Christ, that we may be justified by our faith. You know, that it kind of kind of shows us the way a little bit, but it, it isn't actually the way. You know, so the way we put this uh, in Lutheran terms is Luther said, the law is our mirror. The law is our mirror that we can see ourselves, that we can see ourselves like that. That's so like, you know, that's how you comb your hair in the morning, you know, or whatever like that. You look in the mirror to kind of see all the issues. And, and so, so like the law is like a mirror. That's like, that's like the classic Luther Lutheran thing is that the law is the mirror. And that's, that's kind of what Paul is saying here in a premier society, <laughs> or at least not readily available. One note, Pastor. Yeah. What you're saying, he says, the law teaches us the need for salvation. God's grace gives us that salvation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's really good. The law, like the law, like teaches us the need, need for salvation. So, so like, so, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. I want to go a certain direction. I'm not, I'm not going to, um, but, but it's, um, but yeah, that, I think that, that then in, uh, has us encounter a different um, understanding of how we deal with other, other folks type of, type, type of thing. Um, uh, let's see here, because, and I'll say this. When you listen to people's biggest critiques of church and Christians is that it, now this we, we're translating it into our words is that we usually lead with the law as if their understanding of it is the law is what leads to salvation. Um, and so and so. I think maybe the mirror, the mirror is, is, is for us in a lot of times. So we'll kind of get into that on Sunday a little bit, a little bit. And so, so the, um, so, all right. So then continuing with verse 26 here and uh, um, see, I, I, I mark this. Oh, he just, he says again, it's like what Lee said earlier. He's going back to its Abraham's seat. Like, like you, you were in Christ. Oh, and look, look at what he does. He does this whole big tent thing again um, during, during this section. For you, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. And he's like, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And, and um, the, you know, it, here it, in this country, we like to believe that there aren't, there isn't a caste system. I mean, there definitely is. Like we definitely have different levels of, of people here. But I think because we, we like to believe that there isn't, we, we don't let these phrases like there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave or free or anything like that hit us as hard as they should, yeah. you know, because like, you know, Rome, there was oftentimes more slaves in Rome in the Roman Empire than there were citizens, mm -hmm. you know, like that's, you know, this entire subclass of, of humanity, right? Like. Like, and then you, and then we're talking about people wanting to go back to being Jewish and living, living Jewish lives and seeing salvation in there. So he's saying like, there's, there's neither Jew nor Greek slave or free. And like, and that, that is like devastating. People probably would have gotten mad hearing that, yeah. you know, and, and, and they, they probably would have gotten angry and, and he's going like, you know, we are in Christ, and if you're in Christ, and then you're a part of that one seed, that one seed, and and that idea is what is what drove the church into the the rest of the world 
because it was that one idea that caught that caused a lot of the persecution in the early church that there is one seed uh, and and that all fall into that one seed and then and that drove into the rest of the world and then that also drove it into the hearts of everyone that heard that of all of those that, that have been hurt by people um, that, that wanted to hold others down and all of that stuff. Yeah. So, because Christianity has always been a religion that was bottom up. It it's, it's never, it's never spread too far from being top down, you know? So, so that's, that's kind of what, what has happened what's happened there. Um, I don't know. Any, any last, any last thoughts before we, we get into chapter four here? The, the note on 28, I have again, states what you said, ethnic, social, and sexual identities do not determine one standing before God. All yeah. who are baptized into Christ are one in his body. Yeah. I, so, and that's, and that's something that, that, like, this is a revolutionary phrase that Paul is saying in this world, and it's still revolutionary to this day, because there's a lot of times when we go, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope. and we, when we turn into the law of righteousness, that you've got to clean yourself up and live this life, you know, in order to be a part of the body of Christ and, and Paul keeps dragging us away from that and go and going, no, the law is a mirror. Like if you uh, are faith in Jesus, if you have faith in Jesus and, and Jesus is that, is that seed, then you are heirs according to that, that Abrahamic promise, you know, like that's, and, and that's what's, it's still, Blowing us up because I guarantee I don't care where you are or who you are. You've got people that you can think of that are on the outside based on who they are and what they've done, you know, and Paul is blowing that up and going, no, (laughs) no, it's, it's faith in becoming part of that promise of God. And that's a hard thing a lot of times for us that we can be fine sitting in that faith and promise of God, you know, <clears throat> and that, that, that can be difficult for us. No, that was, that was good. Cause it's, that's a revolutionary phrase back then. It's still today. You just have to translate it. And the thing is with how fast our culture moves now, um, our, our boogeymen and all that stuff uh, will change from year to year, decade to decade, all, all of the, all of those things, you know? So like we, we have, we have to have the, the, the ability for ourselves to be able to translate. It's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. This, even, even those people, you know, faith in Jesus is, is there. So, yeah. Um, all right, let's do chapter four. Um, Make a um, we'll go to uh, verse 20. 20. So let's see here. This. Let me hit this button. All right, here we go. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not God's. 
But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you, that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in a good thing always, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you, I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone. For I have doubts about you. <laughs> For I have doubts about you. No, snowman. Okay, so so continuing on here. Um, all right. Uh, well, let's the um, remember what you you know, what you what you'd like to talk about. Or, or does anyone have anything that's real pressing before we go? Start start on this. Okay, so. So, um, so again, we see that those heirs are God's seeds, and they're and they're part of that faith in Jesus. And he continues on, and, and verse verse one of chapter four. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different than from a slave. Like though he is a master of all, it and like he, like again, he's beginning that slave language. Like that's that's huge language that's being used. This underclass in that society, he's like, there's no different than a slave. Like that's that's huge. That's huge language. And again, what I said last last just a few just a few minutes ago that Christianity has always been a bottom up a bottom up religion. And that's that's what it is. That's where its power is is in a Christ crucified. <laughs> you know, like that's. Uh, and, and and a revulsion of power, not not an acquiring of it, and um, so uh, we, we, and we and that takes us that idea of those those slaves, you know that they that they are they're no different than slaves, but the truth is is that we are all uh, guardians and stewards unto the appointed time. Um, what did that uh, guardians and stewards, what did the other translations have for that? That's verse two. That's verse two. They're best guardians and trustees. Guardians and trustees, what NIV has Managers. too. Managers. 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 Yeah. So, so, um, so yeah, but it's this idea of, of, you know, what we call in the church stewardship, you know, that they're, that we're stewarding a, the, the appointed time. And, 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 he, and he ends up saying, and it's this, this through per, all through Paul, that even, you know, we're going to have struggles, you know, that we're in bondage under the ele elements of the world. But when the right time came, when the fullness of time comes, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born of the law, to redeem those who were feeling that bondage. Notice what he's using there. He's using slaves and bondage there. Does he keep using bondage there in your translations? And like, what was that the end of verse? In order to redeem those who were under the law. Yeah, yeah. Might yeah. Receive adoption as children. Yeah. So yeah. again, he's using that one seed language, that one family language. And he keeps going, using that, those ideas of the lowest in that society of slaves and then bringing in, and that we are all part of this, this sons, sons of God. So this is called looking at the third text. Can we assume that 
that some of what is happening in Galatia and these other these other churches around here, that these people are beginning in order to give power to themselves, are beginning to push out maybe the lowest of the low and, and do more for those that, that are of means and all of that stuff. I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't say that here, but he starts spending a lot of time talking about the lowest of the low and how they are part part of it as well. And yeah, I think he's trying to equate us, brand new Christians, yeah, as the slaves, as the children. We're learning. Mm, okay. And, yeah. And so, you know, we're no better than a slave. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. That's good. We we, um, were, we're, we were controlled by it. Like the elemental forces of the world type of yeah, thing? Yeah, we're controlled by it. Yeah. Now, and this is another thing that might be interesting, is that those elemental forces, is that a reference to, oh, foolish uh-huh. Galatians, how, how have you bewitched you, and this present evil age? You know, is this a, a further, a further of the same idea that he's that he's saying of this of this struggle that that they're going through? And uh, verse six is a classic one, and he goes, "Because you're sin, because you're sons, now the spirit of God has come to you, and giving you not the heart of I have to I have to find my place, but it's." He's giving us the call in our heart to call God, Father, Daddy, you know, like, like that, that whole, that whole thing, like a, a closeness call of Dad or, or something like, like that to God. It's basically like a familial family intimate. thing. So, yeah. Intimate. Yeah, intimate. 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 Yeah. Intimate. And so he's like, so, so you're no longer a, a slave, but a son an heir, an heir through Christ. So then here's what I think. So he spent all this time connecting this idea of that he's been playing with the whole time that we are one because of the seed. There's this one seed of Abraham. He's, he's doing this up. It's just like slaves and, and, and you know, all, all these things, but we are all, we are all um, in the family of God. And then look, look what he starts talking about after this. He starts talking about his own humbleness and his own problems, right? And he and he's even talking to them how how they showed him so much compassion. And, and I and this and we'll kind of get into it here for a second, but it seems like these people that have gone into here have been pushing aside the the weak and the outcasts and and all all of the all those things. And and in order to have strength, the strength of a self righteousness, the strength of, you know, all all these things, and he's going to them. He's going. Don't you remember how you treated me? So, um, so we look at uh, verse eight. Uh, let's see. Uh, when when did you not know God? You serve those by which nature are not gods. So you serve those which were were low. But after you know now, or or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and the beggarly elements to which you mm-hmm. desire again to be in bondage? So I guess he's calling those guys, those guys, they're not worth anything. Like you're, you're going against God. You're going against the seed of Abraham. So you observe the days and months and seasons, years. I'm afraid for you, lest I have labored in vain. All right. That does any of your notes have anything for verse 10? Okay. Eight to ten. Eight to ten? Well, compares the Galatians interest in observing the Jewish festival days. There we go. Following their former worship of natural elements. Yeah. So so, so they they now observe all the, the Jewish holy days like they used to worship money. Yeah. Money mm-hmm. or any of the other celebrations. It's and he's basically saying it's no different than that. Yeah, you're not going to find any more righteousness by by celebrating Yom Kippur. You know, Coley and I are going to celebrate Yom Kippur this year. That's because our public school system doesn't. We're going to go off and do it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's 
the uh so so it's um and and uh and so so yeah so and then then look at well so getting into that I, i'm going to go on a tangent this, we're going to go over just a little bit here today um something coley and i've been laughing at that there's there's a movement inside the lcms right now of of lutheran women who are desiring to wear head coverings again, like into cover their, their, their hair and, and, and all, all of that stuff. And it's, it's interesting because like she and I were talking, I'm like, well, we're talking about all this stuff in Galatians right now. And, and because, because the movement's still kind of small, they allow it to have a lot of grace, but like, it, it just, it feels like something that they just, that they're just, plastering onto the faith to add add something to it it seems it seems it seems odd but it, it's and Cole and I were talking about it it's like it's like this it's this it's this kind of trying to pursue righteousness rather than live live in it type of type of idea these 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 ladies are wanting to you know cover their heads in church again and 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 all, all of that like, stuff like wearing wearing hats to church <laughs> like i think i think i think it's a lot of hats and like and all that that's, is, yeah 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 and they always had yeah 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 like that's yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah like that's and so and so that's you know, that that's something, and we're and Cole and I were just talking about it, and I think that kind of has some to do with what we're talking now. You know, is it bad to do it? Like, no, it's mm. fine. But if you start judging others because they're not doing it, that's right. that's where those hats away. You know, like that's mm. that's that's where she it starts getting thing, and that, and that's what that's one. what what. Ed, Ed Bach said just a little bit ago when he read in his book, that's what reminded me of that, you know, like, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like these, these doing all these previous things. So, um, and I thought this was really interesting. So we see now how Paul talks about himself. So, so brother and I, uh, this is verse 12, brother and I urge you to become like me for I became like you. You've not injured me at all. You know, that because of the physical infirmity, that I preached the gospel to you at the first. And, and so he starts talking about, obviously something is wrong with his eyes. Obviously something that was wrong. And he's like, you guys would have gouged out your own eyes for me. And, and it's interesting, his turn as he's going in there. And, and he, he's using that story, obviously connected to this one seed idea that people would give anything for him to be able to have good eyes again, you know? And so, and so we see him doing this again, where he did it with Peter. He's like, even Peter fell to this, you know? And then he's kind of doing the same thing. He's like, even you guys have already acted like this. And you know, that's a good emotion to have, to think about someone who has, has this physical in, infirmity there. Um, and, and, he, and, and he ends that section with, have I, it's verse 16, have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? He's like, no, no. Like, and, and then he talks about their enemy. Now, notice what he did. He didn't call him the enemy. He's like, have I become the enemy? Is your truth? Because we know these guys over there, they're zealous and have what, and, and how they court you is how my translation does it. Uh, what, what are the other translations? That's verse 17. One of the other translations, they are zealous to win you over. Yeah, that's really good. That's a good translation there. They are zealous to win you over, but for no good. Yes, they they want to exclude you um, that you may be zealous for them. So he's talking about what they're doing. They're separating people out. So that you will be, so that you'll go back to them. So please let us, you know, like, like, like we, we need, we need this from you type of thing. And he goes, but it is good to be zealous for a good thing always. And not only when I am present with you, think about what he says there. 
is it's it's good to be zealous, but for good stuff. But listen, don't be zealous for when I'm there. You know, like I'm not there for you to gush all over me. You know, like these guys want you to gush all over them. And um, at least that's how I'm reading it. And he goes, verse 13, uh, verse 19, my little children, for when I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you, I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I have doubts about you. <laughs> it ends on a cheering out there with the, with the, with the Galatians there. That he's, it seems like he's really worried that they are, because these guys are so zealously trying to win them over and to separate them out and divide probably the slaves against those who are not slaves, those who have money and those who don't have money, those who are practicing this way and those who are not. He's, he's like, it's not about that. And he goes, and I want to be present with you, but I'm, I'm worried because I'm hearing all these stories about all these divisions coming in. And, uh, and so, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where we can end today. Um, and all that, did anyone have any last, last feelings or anything like that about what we've discussed today? Didn't go over too bad. 1206. That's not bad. Um, so here's what I want. We got one more week before we start um, the being challenge part of red letter challenge. Um, even if it takes us a little longer to get through it, let's, let's finish Galatians next week. And uh, because we're, we're right there at it. We've been, that it hasn't been my goal, but like we're there. And so, so we could just finish it. We can just finish it next week. And, um, and then we don't have to come back to it um, late, later on, you know, like a dog comes back to his vomit. That's a, was that Jesus or is that Paul? I can't remember. It's, it's in the Bible, but <laughs> they, they go they come back. I think it's Paul. I think it's Paul. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> like, here, hold on. Let me let me look it up. Like, like they come come back like a dog comes back to his vomit. Uh, oh, it's Proverbs. That's Proverbs. Yeah. Proverbs twenty six eleven. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, it's also Peter. Peter said, quotes that proverb in in Second Peter, chapter two, and so <laughs> like that's um, all right. All right. Well, it's it's great. It's great seeing everybody. Um, uh, we're, we're, oh, for the live stream, say goodbye to. Let me just say goodbye to YouTube. Thanks for joining us on, online, everyone. All right. All right.